Alright, hello everyone, Dr. D here, and I'm bringing you once again Dr. D's DDR Checkup, Episode 3. This one is titled, op Options, Preferences, Tips, and Tricks. Later on, we're going to be inviting on our guest, LP Crossover. Today's episode, I think, and I'm a bit biased here because, of course, this is my own show, but I do think that this is the best one yet. I've got a lot of jam-packed information that I'm willing to share with all of you, and I think it's going to help a lot of you, whether you're a beginner, intermedi intermediate, or possibly even advanced. I'm hoping that there's something here for everyone. So, what is the title? The title is Options, which is going to be referring to the options that you have available to you. These are the tools that us as DDR players can use to maximize our potential. Preferences, of course, we have different styles, we have different preferences. We'll be touching out on that. And then lastly, we're going to be just talking about some basic tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the years that I think if you know it and you add it to your arsenal, you're going to see some improvement. So when we're going to be talking about all these topics, we're going to be looking at two main different areas, and that is one being the hardware aspect and two being the software aspect. There are things that you can do on the hardware and software side that are going to help you improve your DDR game. All right, sound good, right? Uh, I hope you guys are excited to jump into here. And we do have one uh, video analyze analyzation to do later at the end. And I even have a somewhat of a co-host today. I did invite PyGuy314159 on here today to help me uh, get through the opening introduction section. And uh, yeah, PyGuy, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, not us, <laughs> because it's I can, I, I can I can hear you singular, and I heard LP crossover earlier. <laughs> All right, perfect. So, uh, Pi Guy, do you know exactly what we're covering today? Um, just kind of the different modifications you can make to both the the hardware and the software. I'm assuming that's like options, like speed mods and turn mods, and so on. Yeah, that pretty just much. Just ways to make. Just ways to make the game feel easier. Okay, yeah, that's one way to say it. And uh, I purposely did not let PyGuy know all my notes for uh, this episode. I kind of want to see some of his reactions, see if he has any added input or whatever he'd like to say. All right, so we're going to start right off the bat with hardware. Because I feel that before you even attempt to play, you should always check the hardware. Now, I'm not oblivious to the fact that a lot of you are playing at either Round 1 or Dave and & Busters, and the general sentiment is it's hard, if not impossible, to get a tech to modify any of the pads that you play on. You know, sometimes there's a, a, you know, a sketchy arrow or two, and it can lead to a lot of headaches. And pro probably in a future either video or episode, I really do want to look at ways to get an art tech or management to listen to our pleas to uh, you know help modify and improve the cabs all right so the first thing we're going to touch up on and uh, when we're doing this how about we uh, throw up a image how about 
uh, this one. Okay, so in this image we have three different versions of the hardware that you could be playing on when you're playing VDR. So over here we have on the left the CRT red cab, we have in the middle the HD white cabinet, and uh, finally on the right side it could be called the X cabinet. A lot of people use different names, like they call it the CRT, the HD versions, the white, the black, the red, you know, whatever you prefer. And of course, we can't forget that there is the gold cabinet. And all of them have one thing in common, and that is the pads. Now, not all pads are created equally, and that is both in the build quality and the maintained condition. Now, I want to briefly talk about pad modding in today's topic. And pad modding is whenever you are making adjustments to the pad to help improve either the registration of the sensors, the actuation points, or f the feeling like flush versus sunk. So you'll hear this topic or the, the terminology sunk or flush. Sunk is referred to like, you know, like it's sunk in. Like sank, sank in, sunk in. Bye guy, I need, I need verbiage help. What, what's the correct way to say that? Sunken in. Sunken in. Okay, we're going to go with sunken in. So, uh, like, think about, like, the Grand Canyon, okay? Like, craters, okay? Like, moon craters. Like, those are, uh, those are pads we don't want to play on. Ideally, you want to try to get them more flush. I definitely understand the sentiment. People don't like fully flush. If it's fully flush one-to-one, -one, you can't really tell where the metal is and where the panel is, but there's... There's definitely a middle ground where most players are comfortable. So making sure that your hardware is good is pretty important. But let's say you can't get the tech to come and help you that day. What are some other things that you should be looking out for? This is something I think is, is usually not really, uh, it, it's overlooked a lot. And for that, I'm going to bring on a little video of mine. This is an old, old video. Let's, uh, let's see if Welcome to our last get it to show up. Hold on one second. All right, there, there he is. There's eight years ago, Dr. D looking handsome as ever. And in uh, this video, I was teaching people how to modify their pads. I was going over the idea of uh, trying to get the panels as flush as possible. And uh, you know, if you remember, by the way, I'll, I'll leave a link to the playlist in the description of this video. I do have a lot of modding videos. They're kind of outdated, but the the fundamentals are still there you want to raise up the sensors uh, so that it's high enough to be more flush but not high too high that it's going to trigger the panel and you also want to make some uh, foam mods on the uh, the brackets here but you know again we're not this isn't a pad modding so I'm, I'm going to gloss over a lot of that but what I did want to show well uh, was one thing that uh, you should be doing is uh, leveling your pads so to level the pads, and I thought I downloaded a different, it looks like I did not. Okay, so what are leveling the pads? So let's bring back up the cabs right here. Underneath all the pads are eight wheels and eight legs. Those legs are also considered level levelers, and they do what it sounds like. Their job is to level the pad. Uh, white cabs especially, for whatever reason, the pads are very, very easy to get uneven, to be not leveled. Over time, like even just a day of playing, you'll find that some of the legs are going to start screwing back up into the pad. And when this happens, it's going to cause unevenness between the pads. And when you're stepping, it's going to cause a very noticeable like earthquake mod, an unintentional earthquake mod. I can't stress to you how important leveling your pads are. They are so important, there is not a single time I play DDR without going to every single leg on the machine with my hand, lifting up the machine, and making sure that it is firm on the ground. It is that important. I do not play until I check all legs and make sure that they are all firmly on the ground. Why, why do I do this? Well, one, the feeling. You know, once I feel any kind of uh, shakiness, I feel like I don't have any control. I feel like I don't have any ability 
to to have a replicatable uh yeah yeah I can't I can't replicate what I'm going to do so the more consistent you know this goes back to the first two episodes you were trying to look for consistency the more consistent the more consistency you can get the more uh likely you can repeat the results you know you're going to be able to to get the the results to be repeated so first step for me always level the the legs make sure that they're firmly on the ground if you're not able to access them yourself ask the arcade staff or management to get a wrench if you're going to do it with a tool you could use a wrench personally I'm able to do it with just my hands usually I'll get one hand underneath the pad lift up as hard as I can and then I will screw you know clockwise the the leg until it's firmly on the ground and then I'll drop the pad I do that for each one of them and you'll have a very stable foundation and you know that is what it is it's a foundation having a strong foundation is really key and that's something that you can do even before you play you don't have to open up the pads to do this just make sure that it's level if you can't do it by yourself to fix it ask someone to help you and you might be surprised how much better it feels and how more can how more you can get consistent by doing that every time all right, so that's uh, one. Okay, so the next one, we're going to talk about uh, uh, three different materials you can use for the actual panels. So, of course, the panels, they get dusty over time. You know, we used to call this back in my day, we called it scrub dust. You know, the, some outsiders just hopping on the pad, playing a round or two. You know, they're not really serious players, and then they're just getting their dusty, dirty shoes all over the panels, and they get really slippery. This is called scrub dust yeah probably the term should be retired but I'm just telling you how we called it 15 years ago but uh what can we do about that well you gotta clean it so this brings us to the next things so we're gonna talk about three things the first one is baby powder yes we're gonna talk about baby powder and we're gonna talk about water and finally we'll talk about like Windex or any kind of like cleaning solution these are the three different things that we can use to deal with panels at the arcade. And some of them are more kosher than other others. Let's put it like that. <laughs> Let's start with the basic, water. So this is something I also do before I play every time. I get some paper towels and I get it soaked. I get a uh, soaking uh, I get some soaked paper towels, not like soaping like dripping wet, but like you know, I, I get it soaked, I give it a squeeze, and then I have a moist paper towel you know pretty thick with me at all times and throughout the entire session I'm using it to wipe down my panels eliminate the dust and even wipe the bottom of my shoes to make sure that there's no sweat or uh, once again eliminating the dust now that's my preference again this title is called preferences everyone has a different preference what might work for me might not work for you so I'm giving you three things that you can use Personally, I use water. It's pretty consistent. No matter where you go, there's going to be water. You know, if you get Windex or you get some, like, glass cleaner or whatever, it might not always be the same. Some places may allow you to use it. Some places may not. So if you want consistency, I just do water. And, you know, I've been to some tournaments before. Like, one time when I was at a uh, Top Ranker in, uh, in Hong Kong, you know, they wouldn't allow anything but water on the pads. So, like, ever since then, I, I decided that, I, I should probably just make sure that I just make my style with water in case like a tournament doesn't allow it. All right, so water is pretty neutral. It'll get rid of the dust, and then it's going to make sure that uh, you have a, the performance that, that you want. It's not too grippy. So that brings us to number two, Windex. So Windex or glass cleaner or any kind of like cleaning material like that, this is used you can spray it directly on the pads or if I was going to use it I probably spray it on a paper towel and then wipe it on the panels now this does two things you know like water kinda like really just cleans up the dust and like gives you a smooth well not smooth but gives you a surface but not only are you gonna uh, clean the surface by using that you're also going to make it extremely grippy now hear me out here I like grippy probably more than most people but using something like Windex will make it even more grippy some people prefer that and I definitely understand why someone would like that but it kinda comes down to personal preference if you like that 
So experiment with water, experiment with Windex, and then that brings us to the last one, which is baby powder. And baby powder is kind of controversial. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say it. Baby, baby powder is definitely a controversial thing to either include or not include when, when uh, modifying your panels. So should you do it? Should you not do it? Well, I'm going to say what I just said. It is preference. But why do people do that? Maybe understanding why people do that is more important first. So the idea between for, uh, for baby powder is the total opposite of Windex, and that is to make the surface as slippery as possible. So that's why you see people using baby powder. Now, unlike water and Windex, which in general you're never going to get yelled at for using, baby powder you might, which is another reason maybe try not to rely on it. Not every arcade is going to allow you to to put on some baby powder on the pads. So it might not be the best option uh, if you want to have a consistent result at all the arcades that you go to. So if you rely on it too heavily, you might get disappointed if they don't allow you to use it at every arcade. All right, but baby powder makes it extremely slippery. And why is that good? Well, fast motion. If you can make it very slippery, you can move around extremely fast on the pad. You do barely even have to lift up your feet, if at all. You can just slide between the arrows. So that is one reason why uh, uh, people use baby powder. Personally, I don't like it. I like more of a grippy feel. I feel that if you use baby powder, you're going to have a lot more harder time timing. Because if you have too much sliding around, it's hard to be consistent. You know, when you step and you stop, you know you step, you know you stop. If you step and you slide, maybe sometimes you slide a centimeter, sometimes you slide four centimeters. But either way, the variation that you have when you're sliding with baby powder is a little bit too difficult to get your timing down. So for a strictly MA perspective, I would say don't use baby powder. I totally get it in ITG, people trying to pass level 20s and 24s and 28s. Yes, baby powder might be the best thing you can you can use. But here's the thing, all those players playing 24s, 28s, all that good stuff, you don't see them trying to FA or MA. <laughs> They're trying to pass, okay? They're just trying to pass. If you're trying to build a style that you're trying to get the max judgment for each step, I would not recommend baby powder. All right, so that covers that. I want to bring Pi Guy back in here for a second. Have you experienced? Have you experimented with either water, baby powder, or Windex? I haven't, but other people at my arcade have. I see them spraying stuff on the pads, and one in particular is trying to push our text to let them modify the pads. And so far, no dice. Yeah, but it's it's not always going to be there. Well, yeah, like I said, in the future, I'd love to have a uh, episode where I'm going to show people like how to go to your staff or whatever to try to get them to allow modifications. All right, so that is that is something that you have to consider. Again, it comes down to play player preferences. I can tell you what I prefer. I can tell you why I prefer it. I can tell you why some people prefer baby powder, but it comes down to what you want to do and how you want to play. Do what's right for you. And if you are going to use baby powder or even like Windex and something like that, be considerate about the players after you. Pie Guy, do you ever feel that the pads are too grippy after they're spraying the stuff? I, I don't notice. Okay. There's definitely some solutions that go unnoticed, and there's more that are, like, egregious. You know, if you have some kind of spray that's, like, making it way too grippy and some people going up after you are complaining, maybe be courteous. When you're done playing, wipe your pads down with some water, you know, like paper towels and water to get, get away the residue. You know, be considerate about the people that you're playing with. So, you know, double goes for baby powder. If you put on baby powder, it really gets into the pads. The techs are eventually going to have to get in there and clean it. So if you really are going to use it, minimal, if at, if at all. I mean, I don't know. I can't I can't force you. I can't tell you, but I can just tell you that. Uh, what I just did. All right, so that kind of covers uh, that. I, I'll touch up on a small point that I made last, uh, the first time, I guess, and that was uh, bringing a towel or bringing some paper towels with you. You want to get that to wipe off your sweat. And, you know, as we 
we were mentioning with like the panels you know we sweat when we play you know there's there's no denying that we sweat and sweat does fall down our legs it falls down our body and it lands on the panels and I would say that the worst thing you want on the panels is sweat. <laughs> Coincidentally, like maybe the worst thing that can be on the panels is sweat. And when we play, there's just buckets and buckets of it. So uh, you really want to make sure that after every song, even like once you start getting, uh, yeah, once once like the songs start start coming on and your your heart rates up and you're just pouring sweat, you really want to wipe yourself with a towel or a paper towel to prevent that sweat from dripping on the pads because that could. Uh, you mess up your formula like if you have a water based panel or a Windex based or pa baby powder like if you think baby powder is bad mix some sweat with baby powder and oh oh lord like ah uh, that that's like game over there ah uh, uh, the horror horror I, I don't even want to remember those days but uh, yeah so yeah keep keep that in mind uh, make sure you're comfortable and that covers it for panels so leveling your pads and uh, figuring out what the solution is for making the pads more or less grippy to your preference. All right, so moving on, the next thing I wanted to touch on were the different types of cabs. I'm going to test out Pi Guides. How many different types of hardware cabs can you list off that run DDR A20 Plus? Um, there's, you mean like white cab, red cab? Yeah, I have three of them here. Yeah, so there's the white, the red, the black, and then the gold. All right. Is there any more? There probably are. I don't know what they are. All right. So the, the answer is, yeah, there is actually more. So I would say beyond the normal four. So once again, we have the CRT uh, red cab, the two LCD cabs with the, um, well, there's three because the fourth one is the gold cab. So there's about four main types. Now, if you're in the United States, you're really only ever going to see the white cab and the gold cab. Like, that's it. Like, that's all you have access to. If you're in Asia, you kind of have four, some more options. You can find the X-style cabinets. You can even find the red cabinets. And in Asia, more and more often, you can find the fifth kind. And I'm going to refer to them as Franken cabs. <laughs> Uh, what's a Franken cab? Well, it, it's exactly how it sounds. A Franken cab is a cabinet that is like a Frankenstein cabinet. So imagine like taking like a, a red cab and putting an LCD on it. Boom, Franken cab. Or you take a, a gold cab, you mix it with some DDRX pads. Boom, Franken cab. There's even the old, old style like third mix cabs. I'm talking like third mix where uh, like most third most extreme machines back in the day were running on like a third mix variation some of them have even retrofitted them with e amusement readers and and put on uh like a crt or an lcd boom franken cab there's a bunch of kind of franken cabs out in the wild you won't see them in the united states like in the united states you're only going to see gold and white but uh besides that there there's franken cabs there's uh red cabs there's DDRX cabs, and yeah, that's about it. And even the white cabs have some variations. Like there's the Uniana cabs, which like come from Korea, and then there's the J cab white cabs. And you know, the United States have a bit of both. And you know, there are some differences between them. Like some of them are are running Windows XP still. Some of them are running Windows Seven. Uh, some of them, you know, like like there there's a lot of different kind of cabs. So why why am I mentioning all this? Well, believe it or not, there are differences. Like besides this, the hardware, like the pads feel like some people prefer the pads of the red cab, and they think that the white cabs are a little bit more cheap, you know. But some people really like the gold cabs because they still have LEDs in the panels. Some people think it's a little bit too bright, but I mean, if you think gold cabs are bright, you should see the DDRX cabinets, uh, the black ones. Like, th there's a lot of variations. Okay, so. We are unfortunately limited to what we have access to, okay? At least if you're in the United States, you have the the ability to experiment between gold and white, which you'll be happy to know that in general, most of the top ranking players, they either prefer gold or white. So you can kind of de facto say that they are the best to play on. 
yeah, like so you know, don't feel like you're missing out because you don't have access to red cabs or DDRX cabs or Franken cabs because for the most part all top players getting like the world record scores they're using white or gold okay so keep that in mind before you uh, you get jealous and you know very personal and very very brief I don't want to go too off on a tangent you know for a long time when DDR Ace came out I was limited to just playing on red cabs and I did feel it was unfair for quite some time because the few times I did play on white I knew that the timing was easier it was a little bit more uh, easier for me like I'm an MFC player it was easier for me to get them on white cabs but all I had access to was red cabs so you know I was missing out but you know eventually I got a white cab and you know so it, it's all good now but uh, keep that in mind there are differences you should figure out which one you prefer you know like between the gold and the white considering most people have access to it you know there's a slanted monitor for the for the white cab which doesn't exist in the gold there's a bigger screen on the gold that doesn't exist on the white there's LEDs like you know there's there's some small minute changes but uh the timing is really what it comes down to and if you want like this is a very like a uh, bird bird eye view of like what to expect if you're playing on gold cabs the latency of the monitor is a lot less which means that you'll be stepping a lot earlier so if you're playing on a gold expect to be stepping earlier if you're playing on a uh, white cab in general you have to step a little bit later than what you feel like you should step there's a little bit more latency or delay but like you know the timing is similar but they feel different you know and the red cab uh, if you're if anyone was curious it's similar to a gold cab believe it or not where uh the the response time is is really immediate and by the way per preference wise i actually prefer playing on red cabs but wait 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 you i just said that i prefer white no 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 i prefer the feeling i prefer the feeling of the game when i play on red cabs because it feels instantaneous you know as soon as i hit the step is registering and i just it's it's just it's really great feedback you know it feels excellent but unfortunately i can't get like the top marks if i'm playing on the red cab so that's why i have to play on the white cab but you know like i said that's that's like the personal things aside and i don't want to go too deep into the hardware differences but something to keep in mind is uh, knowing which cab you prefer and uh, maximizing it and me just telling you that in general most of the top rankers are getting their best scores on gold and white cabs so as long as you're playing on one of those two know that you have the best chance and uh pi guy you told me you've never tried a gold yet is that correct yeah, the only one I have access to is white. Oh, really? Most uh, round ones do. Are you at a Dave & Buster's or a round one? I always forget. I'm at a Dave & Buster's. Oh, I am in Minnesota, and the closest round one to me is, I believe, in either Milwaukee or Chicago. Which is what, like a four-hour drive? Something like that. Well, for me, I only have access to white cabs or red cabs, and reds are getting fewer and fewer by the year, so... Luckily, I do have plenty of whites, even though we've been on lockdown for coming up on four months, so who knows when I'll play on a white cab again. <laughs> All right, so that kind of covers everything for the hardware. So, you know, we talked about leveling your pads, taking care of your panels, knowing which machine to pick and uh, which one your preference. We talked about having towels for your sweat, and yeah, that covers the hardware. So, if you think that was long enough, well, believe it or not, like we, we're just scratching today's topic because oh boy we have a lot more to talk about because what's coming up next is the software and for the software there is a lot to cover so you know bear with me and uh, we're gonna get through this you know uh, we're gonna get through this so what were we talking about when we were talking about software we're talking keep in mind this entire episode is dedicated to everything you do outside of gameplay okay like we're trying to know what do we have available to us either hardware or software wise that can help us you know knowing what you what you play best on how the panels need to feel you know we touched upon it on episode one and two but you really want to have the consistency the more consistent you can make your sessions the more consistently you can improve if every time you go to play like if you're playing one day on a white cab then you're on a gold cab and then like if you have the access then you're on an x cab like if you're mix matching it you're you're 
you'd be better off focusing like those three sessions on one of them to master it than spreading it out in many different places you know we're trying to maximize we're trying to maximize uh how how we play and how consistently we play so you know i i have to keep emphasizing this so if if you've heard me say it like 20 times well get ready to hear me say it a hundred more times because consistency is really key when you're looking to improve and get better all right so options well before we even get to the gameplay before we even get there uh we're going to talk about you put your credit in you swipe your card all that good stuff and you're given the option between normal and premium play so that's the first software thing we're going to talk about normal play versus premium play and for this in fact in the united states as far as i know it doesn't matter you should just always pick premium play because how it works in the united states is regardless if you pick uh normal or premium it charges you the same so that kind of makes your choice easy by default if you're outside of the United States, like maybe you're in Australia, New Zealand, you're in Asia, you're in Canada. I'm not sure how Canada works, actually. But let's say that you're in a place where it doesn't matter. What's the advantages and disadvantages? All right, so normal play is generally should be cheaper. It is cheaper than a premium play. Kind of makes sense by the naming, right? The nomenclature, yeah. Okay, but why is it cheaper and what are we missing well what you're missing is the chance to get extra stage so when I say chance to get that because even if you pick premium there's no guarantee you'll get extra stage but picking normal will guarantee that there's no extra stage there will only be a max of three songs also if you pick normal you are not going to have access to 0.25 modifiers so from 0.25 until 3.75 those are gone you only get 0.5 modifiers I don't even think you get 0.5 you only get between 1 to 8x in 0.5 increments so you're missing those speed options you're also missing risky 4 or life 4 as they now call it I don't think they ever called it risky 4 did they Eh, I'm not getting into that so you're missing out on that you're missing out on the 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 speed mod so why would anyone want to pick it well one Maybe you're playing and you're not really going for extra stage. Maybe you're like grinding a hard song and even if you got extra stage, you're not going to be able to clear it on extra stage. So it doesn't make a difference. And maybe you're playing a song that you don't need a 0.25 increment. And maybe you're playing a song that you're grinding and you always full combo it so you can use risky one, which means that you can fail out. So those are the advantages of using normal play. The disadvantage is, again, you can't charge up or get extra stage and you can't have access to all the mods. So what is the advantage to using Life 4? Well, Life 4 is, well, sorry, well, premium. Well, premium, every time you play a song, you're charging up your heat power as long as you're at least passing it. They, it's called star power now, but they like change between, but that's, that's what the nine uh, orbs are that needs to charge up that'll unlock extra stage. You still have to pass your final stage to unlock extra stage but as long as that's charged up you'll get an extra stage which must be played on life 4 so premium normal play it, it's something to keep in mind if you watch me play and I'm grinding you'll notice sometimes I use normal normal play if I'm if I'm grinding a song that like for example I use 4x on and I'm trying to MFC it so I'm always gonna full combo it I'll probably do normal I don't need to do premium I don't need to pay an extra like 25% markup to get that extra song at the end because generally I'll even want to quit out of my final stage like if I don't get the song on final stage I don't want to finish the song so it, it kind of benefits me to pick normal play so you know these are the options again that you should consider and you know there's some like kind of like sneaky hacks around it like if you're playing with someone and you know you're not going to be using 0.25 modifiers or whatever you can make them pick premium and then you just pick normal as long as at least one person picks premium and that person charges their heat power well you will both get extra stage so like you can alternate like maybe the first round you use premium they use normal and you help them get extra stage then they use premium you use normal and like that that's kind of like a cheeky way you can do it but you got to make sure that the person who's using premium always either full combos triple a's or life fours the song that they pick pie guy can you get 
uh, three orbs if you life for it, but you have a really low score, like under a double A, or you don't know? Um, yeah, so if you play on life four, you get one orb even if you fail. Yes. And then you also get, like, one orb for passing at one point for... Double A. Getting an A, two points for double A, something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure about that, but in general, you're not going to be getting under <laughs> under 950 if you're life fouring something. Like you'd have to be intentionally trying to do that, because I, I I don't know. But and it is a max of three orbs per song, though. So if you want to get to nine orbs in one credit, you will have to get three on every song. Yeah, and then that's the other advantage you could do with playing with someone who else is using premium. Like, if you're only averaging two, two orbs a song, and they're averaging two, well, guess what? You're going to make it, because it's going to be two, four, six, eight, and then the third song, as long as you get one orb, you're going to get it. So playing with someone does help you ch uh, charge up your orbs. So that's something to consider. You know, again, we're talking about options. Some of these might be very obvious to intermediate and advanced players, but there's some strategy with it, especially if you're not in the United States, and it does matter when you're playing with someone else and you know you can help each other out but something to keep in mind maybe they'll eventually change the the structure the pay structure that they have in the United States right now and it'll it'll this will be a lot more relevant all right so that gets us through the options of normal and premium so next on our table are some of the folder options and selecting so even before we get to the menu <laughs> it's funny I, I still have this this graphic up on here but we haven't even like talked about that and we're still not even going to talk about it. So we're going to talk about like some shortcuts that you can use on the cabs. So as you know, uh, except red cabs, all the other cabs, so the X cabinet, white cabinet and the gold cabinet, they have four buttons up, down, left, right, plus an enter button. So when we look at that, uh, well, let's see. Uh, yeah. So the up, down, left, right buttons, uh, left, right, obviously selecting like left and right in the menu, like, you know, picking song, even up and down is the same thing. Now, a lot of people know this. If you hit left and right at the same time, it will give you the, what would you call that menu pie guy? The options or the, the folders? It's, like? it's like the sword, like what do you want to sword, sword by? How do you want to? Yeah, it'll give you that menu. It'll like, if you want to go by the genre or the level or the BPM, by the way, I always sort by BPM, just FYI, but uh, things like that. <clears throat> All right, so here's the one that a lot of people don't know, and I think that it might surprise some people. I actually don't use it that often, but you can. And uh, Pi Guy, do you know this secret thing that I'm about to share with everyone? Um, I know the thing where you can change the speed mod after you pick the song. Oh, yes. Uh, so here's... The, I was going to... Uh, cover that as well so here's here's the uh, the secret when you are in a folder like let's say that you're in the middle of the ddr a20 folder and oh god damn is that a big folder i mean it's got like what 150 songs it's kind of outrageous something like that <laughs> it's, it's, up, it's outrageous you're in the middle and you you don't want to go through all of it even using up and down is going to take a while well here's the thing if you hit up and down simultaneously it will close the folder that you are currently in pie guy did you know that uh, i did not <laughs> a lot of people don't uh maybe you don't see a lot of people do that but it is absolutely true if you if you don't believe me go try it next time hitting up and down simultaneously inside a folder will close the current folder that you are in it will just make it collapse just like you're, you know, if you opened a folder and closed it, it will be in that state if you hit these at the same time. So, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, I, it took me probably like maybe until 2018. It took me like two years to learn that. But uh, that is that is something you can do. So left, right will give you the folder sorting options. Up, down, at the same time, will close the current folder that you're in with the green button being select. All right, uh, we are not done because there are some other buttons that you can get access to and that is right there which we absolutely cannot see because you know pixels are a thing so this should be a number pad <laughs> and the number pad is well look at your keyboard well not all of us have a number pad on our keyboard but 
And the number pad is 1 through 9 plus 0 and double 0 at the bottom respectively. What can the number pad do while we are still in the menu? So here's uh, the next uh, option that you have available to you. You see the options menu that is brought up right now? Most of you will access it by selecting the song and holding down you know, the select button. So holding down the green button will pull up this and you will have access to all your options. What if I told you, hear me out, what if I told you you can actually access this menu without selecting the song? You might think it's wizardry, but it's not. It's absolutely possible. If you hit nine, that's correct, number nine on the number pad, it will bring up this menu for just the person who hit it. So if I'm player two and I hit the nine on the number pad while we're in the music select, it'll bring up this option menu that I can access. And how do you close it? Hit nine again, or I think you can just go down to the bottom and uh, it'll close it that way too. Uh, do note that if the other person wants to access it, they'll have to hit nine on their number pad as well. Ty Guy, did you know that? Um, I I knew there was some way to deal with the number pad. I never do it that way, though. I just pick the song. Yeah, honestly, I, I don't ever do that. I don't even prefer to do that. When I play with Veronica, she liked to do that quite often. I eventually convinced her not to do that because I don't think it really saves any time. Because like, no matter what, once we pick the song, we're for sure going into like the song select menu. So you might as well change it there. Because like if you do the nine and like you're like you might hold up someone else because like they don't expect you to do that then like oh should I do it now or or you kind of like double waste your time you know and you're probably not gonna like unless you I swear to my DPM folder or if you're playing with someone else who doesn't go by DPM like the speed mod you'll want to pick will depend on what the song is so if you don't know what song someone's gonna pick there's not really any point in yeah. In, going into the mod menu because you'll just have to change your speed mod anyway yeah pretty much so you know that's something to consider i think solo play it's it's definitely pretty kosher to use if you're using it uh with a friend you know maybe ask them see if they're okay with it or if they you know you know just just something to consider but you know preferences and be considerate you know that old adage all right and with that now we can finally finally go into the the software options of the gameplay I'm going to be talking about all of them, and I am so happy. By the way, shoutouts to LP Crossover, my guest who's coming on later, because he was able to snag this perfect photo. I mean, I don't think you guys realize how perfect this photo is. On the left side, it has the the first uh, options, and then it has like the 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 bottom half options. So like, oh man, it's just it's perfect. It's it's mwah, it's it's magnifique. Okay. All right, so. The options that you can see are speed, boost, appearance, turn, step zone, scroll, arrow color, uh, cut, freeze arrow, jumps, and gauge. I'm going to talk about every single one of these. Some of these are quite helpful. Knowing them and having them possible to be used by you is could make a huge difference. You know, just by, by, by modifying your options like let, let's be honest here like m most of us are not 1x players if, if you didn't touch options and you tried playing the game you're not going to maximize your score potential there's a reason why you see every player fiddling around with options before they play if you see some people use an option you're like why are they using that well i'm hoping this sheds some light what are like the general rule of thumb what options you can use what you should what you shouldn't and like how to use it and implement them okay so Let's try to see it. Here we go. The first one is probably the most important. Like you can make any almost any other one you can like mess with and I I'd, I'd probably be able to get by. But if you want me to like maximize my score or you want to maximize your score, it would be the speed mod. The speed mod is by far the most important. I don't care what arrow skin you give me. If you if you gave me one choice between the note skin or the speed I'm choosing speed every time it's that important so what is speed well speed is going to change and this is very important it's going to change the scroll speed it's going to change the scroll now it's not going to change the BPM like this song is 145 BPM that's not going to change what is going to change however is 
the the scroll speed. If you were to play the song on one X, we would call that a one forty five scroll, as in the song is scrolling at one hundred forty five beats per minute because well, that that's one X. It's one. If you were to bump it up to two X, it would now be a two ninety scroll. And if you were to bump it up all the way to 4x, well, double 290, you'd be at 580 scroll. So, why do we use speed mods? Well, of course, we're trying to, we're trying to like get a better look at the patterns. If everything's all scrunched together, it's kind of hard to see. You know, like let's be honest, like you you can't really see what the hell is going on. Like like w w what what are these arrows? Like what w what are they doing? You, the more you can spread it out, the more you can see patterns. The more you can have, the more space you can have between it, the easier it is to time. You know, I always like to say, like, you're kind of artificially enlarging the marvelous window. And I say that because, like, the more space between it, like, like if you could, like, like let's say, like, if you put it on, like, 10x, like, yeah, I know it doesn't exist. If you hit the note, if it was anywhere on the screen and it's, like, a 200 BPM song, it's going to be a marvelous. It's going to be a marvelous because, like, it's 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 that close to it. Now, of course, no one can really read at that speed, but the higher you can make it, the better it is. So, what is a good rule of thumb? Well, I can tell you that players like me and you know, let's call it quote unquote pros, in general, you should aim to read at a scroll speed of 600 to 700. Even 700 is kind of a high for me. There's very few songs I can read at 700. Personally, my my sweet spot is between like. 640 and 680 like if i can get a song in between that oh that's perfect but the higher you can get more comfortable like if you're reading right now at 500 you, you gotta kind of slightly go out of your comfort zone try to go a little bit faster i promise you over time it will get easier and easier off the top of your head pie guy what scroll speed do you use i and I use like 450 as my kind of benchmark. Well, we we got a stealth player here, so I'm not sure you're you're the best sample size, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, most players do prefer you know high 500s, low 600s. I'd say like a, a, a intermediate to advanced player is playing at least 580 to 620. That's like a pretty sweet spot. And then more advanced players, like you know, marvelous attack players, or like you know, world record type players, we're reading closer to like 650 to like 700. So try to bump it up. Try to get more, you know, up there. Keep in mind the speed options are going between 0.25 to 8x increments of 0.25 until 375. After which it's 0.5 from 4x to 8x. Hope that all made sense. But in general, you're never going to touch anything less than, I, like, I, I would say that the only there's only like maybe one or two songs you would ever use one X with, and that would be like, Delta Max or Max Period. Almost everything else is at least a one two five, one five, and most songs are like three four, even five X. So, play around with your speed options. Uh, if you're struggling with some songs, sometimes it's nice to compare it. You know, if you have to get out a calculator, get out that calculator. If something feels really good to you, if it's like, wow, that, that's a great scroll speed, put in the calculation. What are you reading at? And the next time you're playing a song and it doesn't feel right, put in that calculation, do the division, and then see what's the closest you can get to it so that, you know, you're feeling comfortable. The faster the song is, the, the less options you have, unfortunately. And the slower the song is, the more spread out you get, like... The difference of 0.5 is pretty great like when you're like you know reading 5x or 5.5 on like a slow song can make a big difference but okay so that's kind of the speed option so well we're going to wrap up the speed with that uh pie guy any, anything else you'd add about speed um i guess trying to think of like what chris does what chris got his recent mfcs on things like happy lucky yippee and that song is what is it 190 for the the whole song and accepted and 380 at the end mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure what he did is he put his speed mod at something like 3 or 3.25 so he was reading at like in the 600 ish range for most of the song and then the end of it was going at 1200 and because that's a lot shorter compared to the rest of the song he thought it would be easier to just memorize that 
that section that is going really fast at so he can focus on doing the majority of the song in his comfort zone. Yeah, and that, that makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, players like Ty Guy, Chris, they are memorizing sections, so that's something to keep in mind. So it's not a little bit hard to compare. All right, the next one's quite interesting, and that is the boost mods. So in boost, there are actually four. Um, I actually wrote it down. So they're in the boost mod uh, uh, section. There's wave, boost, and break. And we can pretty much ignore break. I don't see any advantages to using break. So we're going to gloss over that. And yeah, by the way, only in all of these columns, only one can be selected at a time. With the exception of uh, hidden and sudden plus because there's a special out there. I I'll get there. I'll get there. I promise. I promise. All right. So uh, which one of these can help us? I told you break's not going to help anyone. Okay. It it's great for showing off. If you want to freestyle, you want to show off, you know, you want to you know, go for it. Knock yourself out. But if you're trying to maximize your score potential, which these uh, videos are aiming to do, don't touch break, okay? Okay, so the question comes to, should you ever touch wave? Should you ever touch boost? No, you shouldn't. No, okay. <laughs> okay, that was anticlimactic. Uh, wave, I would say no. You shouldn't touch wave. Uh, there was a benefit of using wave, like back in DDR 2014. Uh, they changed how Wave works starting in DDR Ace, and by that I mean that uh, before Wave, I want to say that when you use speed mods with Wave, it affected it affected the oscillation of 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 how fast it oscillates. So, like you could actually 8x songs with Wave, or you can 1x songs with Wave. Like you could pretty much read it either way if you're using Wave. Uh, players like me used it back in DDR 2014 when like Max Period was the extra stage song and we had to play it to unlock Over the Period and your speed mod for Max Period carried over to Over the Period. So if you played o Max Period on 1x, which most people preferred playing it on 1x because of the 600 BPM part, <gasps> well, have fun with OTP on 1x, PFC or die. <laughs> It was not fun, okay? The, I, I mean, I can talk hours about that. But we were able to do one trick because uh, if you used Wave on max period with a speed mod, let's say 3x, you could totally read it. You could totally read 3x max period Wave. And then when you went to OTP, I don't know why, which I don't really care because it was great, they killed the Wave. They let you keep the speed mod, but they killed the Wave. So that's how players were able to play you might have saw like back in the day people were playing OTP on like 8x or 3x that's why that's why because we were using wave 3x wave 8x on max period and there but honestly like this is a tangent that is kind of worthless it's more like a fun fact easter egg because like today they changed how wave works you can't get the same results so there's honestly no benefit so that brings us to the last option which is boost which is under the boost you know <laughs> And is there any advantage to using boost? Believe it or not, maybe. <laughs> so it's not very confident, but maybe, maybe there is. And the reason why I say maybe is there is at least one very uh, high level player in Japan who uses boost on the regular. Some of you may or may not know who they are. I do have a video if I can locate it. <gasps> there it is. Okay, let's bring this up. All right, I'm going to have to crop this. One second. Okay, so this was uh, the... All right, so the player in question is Yudai. And you'll notice that he plays using boost. Uh, let me make that a little bit bigger for you guys. Okay, beautiful. So if you're watching Yudai playing, he's using boost. You can see that it's scrolling up. So why would he be using boost? And what could it possibly be happening? Pie guy, do you have a pr an idea? What, why, why do you think he is? I'm curious to see what you would say. Well, what I would say about boost is that it, so it makes the arrows 
move faster as they approach the step zone, but since they're starting out slower, it kind of negates part of the effect of, like, obviously if you pick a faster speed mod, you have to react a lot faster because you don't, you don't have as long to see the arrows. If you have boost on, then they're moving slower at the bottom, so you have more time to see them, but then they'll be more spread out when they get up to uh, the step zone, which is where you're looking. I, I would say that that's a pretty, uh, yeah, you're, you're pretty much on the money there. Uh, I would also say that a player like Yudai using boost probably, uh, this one's not Yudai, let me uh, skip ahead a bit, uh, probably they are looking quite low on the screen because the, these are these are uh, going by so fast at this point that it's hard. Now here's like the one advantage you can see. So like max period kind of really illustrates why why uh, a boost can be helpful. So you'll see it starts off really crunched down here. And then, like, of course, it like it speeds up. Now, here's the thing: Max Period has a very big BPM range. We're talking as low as 180 all the way up to 600. Okay, so like, what what, what can Boost do? Now, notice he's playing this on 0.75. Now, even though he's playing it on 0.75, take a look at this. This guy's here on 1x. These are spread out more. These arrows are spread out more than a 1x player while he is playing on 0.75. Fascinating, right? At the same time, at the bottom of the screen, he has more information revealed. There's a left arrow being blocked over here, but, or no, wait, no, there's a, there's a up arrow being blocked. But uh, the point is that there's more information that, uh, oh, he's on mirror, that's why. Uh, he's kind of like getting the best of both worlds here he has more spread out here so he can kind of time it if he if he times it right you know it's, it's definitely a feeling thing and at the same time you get the advantage of of being able to look down early and then just reacting so you're looking down here you're looking at what's coming up and then as long as you time it and then what really helps him to excel is by the time like so this is the 300 bpm part right that's the 300 and then we're actually at the 180. That's a huge BPM change, but it's still totally readable. You know, it's totally readable, but it, it's looking a lot different. So I'd say that this is a good style to experiment with. It's definitely something to experiment with, especially if you're just trying to like PFC or full combo. It's something that you can do that. If you're trying to MA and you're trying to MFC, like, no, like, like forget about boost. But if you're playing like some, some hard ass 18s, like, like, look, look here. Here's the 600 part. So, like, of course, you're just reacting by looking there because as soon as you see it, it, it's like you're hitting it. So he's looking down here. He's reacting to it. But, hey, he, he's not doing too bad, okay? So I'm, I'm just saying that uh, boosts can be beneficial. It's something that I have not personally experimented with, but I am telling you that there are some, at least one top-tier player, who does utilize boost on um, hard songs. So something to keep in mind. So I'm, I'm going to leave it there for the boost mods. All right, so that is speed, that is boost, and the next one is appearance. So appearance is uh, quite important. So what things are in the appearance category? The following are in the appearance. There's hidden, sudden, hit, oh, well, sorry, they actually, it, they force it now to be hidden plus, sudden plus, hidden and sudden plus, and stealth. And sorry, Pie Guy, but we're going to completely ignore stealth. <laughs> can, can you guess why? Do you hate me? Yeah, pretty much. So, uh... Still ain't going to help you get a better score. <laughs> it's going to help you look cool as hell. And if you want to see some cool ass stealth videos, Pie Guy is the ticket. But the other two are more fascinating. So Hidden and Sudden Plus. I'll say this right now. Uh, hidden is probably not that beneficial. It's probably not as beneficial as you might hope it would be. Uh, back in the day, it served a bigger purpose. Because like when, there, when songs were at 1x... Oh no, like, uh, no, you know, I, I take that back. No, no, no. 
Alright. Hidden, okay. Hidden would be harder Hidden. on a slow song. Yeah, yeah, I take that back. I'm totally mixed up. Hidden has one advantage. I, 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 I do take it back. Hidden does have one advantage. I'm going to bring up the video again because I can actually show it to you. And by the way, my OBS has been like really bad with DLC today, so uh, you're going to have to like bear with me. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and make this. Yeah, like every time I use uh, DLC and OBS today, I have to like recrop it. It's it's quite a it's quite a chore. It's been quite a chore. All right, so I, I'm gonna show you that some players do actually use uh, hidden or uh, right there. So take a look at uh, DDR Koji here. Koji is using Hidden Plus. What is he doing with Hidden Plus? Well, this is a timing mechanism. I have experimented with it a bit. It hasn't helped me too, too much, but it's something to consider, and it's an option that you do have. So why I predict that he's using Hidden Plus is to help him time where to hit it. Like, DDR cab, Ace Cabs are considered a bit later, so by making this artificial line right here, what I think he's doing is like putting in his mind that's where he should be hitting. So instead of focusing on like the the point which most people are trying to match, instead he's gonna let it the point hit this line and like subconsciously that's gonna help him out to uh do that. Would you agree with that? Do you do you concur, Pi Guy? Yeah, it could be that. Well, it could just be that because the top of his barrier is lined up pretty well with the point, maybe that's just an easier visual cue. Yeah, so it's is when it, it is when the when the point gets up to that bar rather than lining up with the step zone. Yeah. So it's it's definitely a visual thing that you can experiment with. Like if you if you're if you're having trouble timing, like try this. Now, is this the correct position? Maybe. Maybe not, because here's the thing. Different people use different ones. Uh, I don't think Brazani is in this video particularly, but uh, I know that his line is matching on the earth, so he's he's like ex accenting to make it even more clear. Like You can get it one-to-one -one on this line if you prefer. So Hidden Plus is something to experiment with. When you select Hidden Plus, when you're in the game mode, hitting up and down will either raise or lower the bar. So that's how you can use Hidden Plus. Okay, what about Sudden Plus? Well, Sudden Plus is absolutely used by a lot of players. It's not actually used by me, not really, but this is Sudden Plus. So Sudden Plus, the idea for Sudden Plus is to um, block off some of the arrows down here. So this guy is not using, uh, Hibiki is not using Sudden Plus, while Hochi Hochikeki is. And what it's helping him do is really focus on what he's seeing here. It, it it's like less noise on the screen. Is that uh, Pi Guy? This is why I need you on this episode. How would you describe it? What what's what's going on here? Why why would he want to be using it? I guess kind of what you were saying, not to get overwhelmed by like an I wouldn't. I wouldn't pick this song as an example, but one might be like Valkyrie Dimension. I see people using Sudden Plus because like for the slow parts, like they want to have a low speed mod to deal with the the really fast parts, but then they're reading like all bunch of clustered 16th notes at 1 and 1.25 BPM. So there are a whole bunch of arrows on the screen at once yeah. and Sudden Plus kind of lets you just focus on what's coming up and not get distracted by the 20 or 30 arrows down the line. Yeah, and I would say that this is uh, probably the most prominent example, and that's OTP's opening section. So they're both on the same speed mod. You see, like, they're all, they're both on 1.5, but you'll notice that over here, uh, there's less going on on the screen. Like, if you look here, it might be a little bit overwhelming. You might be looking a little bit, like, you know, too far off in a, in a place that's not going to be beneficial. So by, by putting this barrier, and, I, and a lot of people that... FYI, he's using it for the entire song. Most people for OTP particularly would just use it for the opening section and then turn it off. So it's kind of unique how Hochikeki is using it. And why I'm saying that is, in fact, most people would put 
hidden or sorry sudden plus even higher so that they really can just focus on what's coming up here and to uh, differentiate uh, the arrows coming up so something to keep in mind something you can experiment with you can play around with it uh, I've never uploaded my OTP MFC beginner video yet but that is one of the only times I've ever used uh, sudden plus and it was mostly because I was just getting bored, like playing that song hundreds of times. Like I just wanted like something extra to do. It felt a little bit more. I don't know if it really helped me or not, but hey, uh, a lot of the top tier players, you know, we're talking. Uh, you know, we can we can bring up like Chris. We can bring up like uh, Chunka. You know, uh, last last time I think it was I showed you. Uh, you know, Chunka playing, and uh, yeah, he absolutely uses uh, a sudden. Sudden plus, yes, I know you guys can't really see it, but you get the idea. So you use it for the slower part of the song. Then once the song speeds up, you just you gotta you gotta uh, you gotta find the right moment to turn it off. So there has to be a good pause. You turn it off and then you go. So something something to consider. So if you're going to be using it, uh, definitely know this part in the song. Like there's definitely songs that it would benefit to use. But there's just no moment to turn it off, you know, so there's not really much you can do about that. So um, something to consider. Um, yeah, so I, I think that kind of covers it. And you can experiment with both of them at the same time. You can have Hidden and Sudden Plus on at the same time, and that'll do it. Yeah, all right, so that covers uh, Hidden, Sudden, and Stealth. And that brings us on to the next one, which is the Turn Mods. All right, turn mods. So let's bring this up again. So after appearance, we have turn. So if it's off, well, you're playing the chart as the step artist wrote it. If you're using a turn, then you are playing a chart that the step artist did not write. And I guess this kind of brings up a slightly controversial topic. And I'm curious to hear Pi Guy's input. Pi Guy, do you have uh, any? take on using turn mods are they free game or do you think that you're a dirty dirty cheater or what, what kind of level of purist are you well i use them myself if i'm trying to like if in the last episode in the episode that i was on we talked about like i'm trying to pass a 19 and i and using turn mods if i'm just trying to pass a hard song i don't have a problem with using turn mods Personally, I don't tend to use them on easier songs. Like, any song I'm trying to stealth, I would prefer to do it without a turn mod. But I don't think it's necessarily cheating, although it can, depending on the song, it can make a big difference. Absolutely. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make this a debate, okay? Like, like, there's definitely people that have, like, strong opinions one way or another. I mean, it's almost as bad, bad as the bar debate. But uh, let's just say which we didn't even talk about the bar but yeah absolutely use that bar like you know like like grab that bar use it like to your full advantage okay like i didn't mention it before but absolutely that's one of your options take it uh back back to uh the turn mods like i have no quarrels using it and a lot of the top tier players they have nothing they 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 have no issues using it you know chris uses it all the time uh little matt used it uh quite a few there's only one top tier player that i know who never uses turd mods and that would be fifems which you guys might be seeing a lot more of fifems he just finished his military service a few days ago and from what i hear he's aiming to start playing some ddr again maybe take back some 19 world records hmm. we'll see if that comes to fruition but as far as i know he's like one of the only people who never uses a turn mod besides that almost no one really cares there's definitely some people who prefer to like do it legit but there's there's really n i don't consider it not legit if you use a turn mod you know it's totally fine so what what are the turn mods well there's regular which is no turn mod then there's mirror left right and shuffle so probably all of you know what they are but i'll go over them very briefly mirror is just the mirrored version of whatever so if there was like an up down if you mirrored it it'd be a down up so all the patterns would be different mirror is a great option and i highly highly recommend exploring it if you have trouble with a song because one of two things will happen uh one it'll just be easier and you can get a better score and that's a win like take take the win so that's one two it's not really easier, but by playing it for a bit on that turn mod, you know, using mirror, 
and then going back to the regular magically the regular is going to feel like a turn mod it's going to feel fresh you're going to be able to replay the the song with like a like a fresh set of eyes almost so using mirror and going between regular and mirror is something really good i i don't always use mirror but uh if i'm having particular trouble with the song yeah sure i'll throw it on mirror i'll see how that feels you know some of my mfcs i get they're on mirror i have no shame about that all right and you know some there's even some purists that say no turn mod or only mirror and then this it's I don't, I don't know why they draw the line there but they'll say like regular or mirror is okay but left right and shuffle no no <laughs> Yeah, I can chime in there just because with Mirror, you're turning the whole chart around 180 degrees, so it's basically going to feel the same. Like, the difference will be, like, if a song used to use the right foot a lot, now it'll use the left foot a lot, but a crossover is still a crossover and all that. With left and right, like, left, down, right could turn into a down, right, up, or up, left, down, which is a a candle instead of a, a sideways crossover and so the it actually does have different patterns so it's like it breaks like the essence or the flow of this chart you know like yeah so yeah there's definitely people like that that will say that uh you know left or right and shuffle that's like really breaking the spirit you know like like true purists will say that it, you can't use a turn mod and then some people say regular or mirror is fine and then some people say like you know anything's fine it, it's just it's up to you you know like like don't don't make your decisions based on like someone else like at like for me the score is going to give it to you if you if you if you did it like if if by playing it on mirror left right or shuffle the score wouldn't input then i would never use it i would just never use it but as long as they keep giving you a score then do it and like if you hear someone say that that like oh someone's cheating because they're using a turn mod they're making it easier so how about you use the turn mod? If it's really easier, nothing's stopping you from using it too. Like that's like my two cents, okay? Like nothing's barring me or you from using a turn mod. If you think someone has an unfair advantage, we'll take that advantage too. Make it a level playing field. Like, okay, I'm I'm not getting into this. All right, but why would someone want to use left or right? Uh, well, I thought I would tell you guys some of the common uh, songs that I use left and right for. So the following are the songs that I have found success by using left or right. Some of them might be already well known. Some of them might not be. But uh, besides mirror, so the regular mirror, like use them interchangeably. If you're having trouble with the song, play it on mirror for a while. Then you can go back and like vice versa. It'll give you a fresh set of eyes. Huge benefit. Explore it more. If you're having trouble passing an 18 or a 19, try mirror. Just try it. Try it can't hurt um wh what would i use for uh left and right well the general rule of thumb you'd be wanting to use left and right on songs that are like really broken or like they're very crossover heavy or they just like feature like really weird patterns and sometimes i just want like even if it's just straight up eighth notes i like to use left or right sometimes just to kind of mix things up you know just to give me something new if there's if it's not like a boss song like boss songs mostly cannot use left left or right it's gonna like fundamentally break them but then again if it's already a fundamentally broken kind of song and chart then it might help you know, i'll get to that yeah everyone uses left and right for like paranoia revolution challenge that's one of them i'm gonna name yeah it's like if the song's already like a broken mess you might be able to benefit from it <laughs> but like in general uh boss songs are just regular or mirror explore those so some of those next songs I'm going to mention are what I prefer on left or right. Mostly left. I don't know why, but I, I, I if I'm going to use left or right, I usually always choose left. Uh, so I'll just list them off. Uh, Joker CSP. Yeah, I like to play Joker CSP on left. Uh, same thing with K AM 3P Chaos special, special. That's an instant left for me. Sunkiss Drop Expert. That's like almost like mandatory left or right for most players <laughs> if you hate crossovers that much. Uh, I've heard some people say Don Don Do is a pretty good song on left or right because uh, it has like like unnecessary crossovers. <laughs> uh, Arabiata, oh boy, that is a left 
right or a shuffle guaranteed. Hades CSP I don't like on left or right, but I have seen players PFC or full combo. You can look up videos of Brazani playing Hades, Paranoia Hades challenge on left or right. I personally don't prefer it, but some people do. A uh, trip machine Phoenix expert is definitely something I use on left. Paranoia Revolution challenge almost everyone uses left for that, and I even like a uh, uh, Nightbird Lost Wing on left. Yeah, I know some some weird some weird choices. All right, so left and right right is something to explore if it, if you're trying to get rid of some um some particular part and it's not going to totally break the other sections. So, you know, like that's why I was able to do it with Night Nightbird Lost Wing. Like it just made a bunch of extra double steps throughout the song, but there's nothing that was going to be like fundamentally different or un impossible to do. But if you're like putting left or right on a crossover song, in general, you're going to make double steps or you're going to make some really awkward patterns. So it just depends on the speed and how fast you can double step and all that good stuff. All right, so that brings us to the last option, which is Shuffle. All right, uh, let's see if uh, you got the songs that I got. Uh, Pie Guy, what songs do you think most people shuffle? Um, Healing Division Challenge. Yep, that was like the first like mandatory shuffle, DDR Supernova. Yeah, like until then, like shuffle is just used for fun or whatever, or like you know just make it make it interesting. But then like people saw, okay, Konami, if you're gonna use if you're gonna write charts like Healing Division Challenge, uh, we're gonna use shuffle. So in general, if you use shuffle on Healing Division Challenge, it's going to completely eliminate the crossover section at the very end, which is arguably the hardest part. Almost the rest of the song is is inconsequential, I guess is the best way to say it, if it's on shuffle or not. Yeah, it's going to be a little awkward. It's going to be different every time. But the key that you're trying to put shuffle on is so that at the very end, you're going to get that non-crossover pattern and hopefully get the score that you're going for. So Healing Division. The other one, the, the one that's so similar to it would be uh, Hyper Twist. That's relatively new. Hyper Twist Challenge on Shuffle, it has a, a literal carbon copy of that section in, uh, <laughs> of Healing Division in uh, uh, Hyper Twist Challenge. So kind of makes sense. And, you know, there's a lot of, like, twists and crossovers. So mm -hmm. Hyper Twist Challenge is definitely a... a a uh, shuffle benefit. I, my record on there is using shuffle, you know, full disclosure. Uh, another one that you can try to play, well, the other, like, <coughs> biggest one would definitely be Dead End Groove Radar Special. Most of the PFCs on that song have been done with shuffle, so that's something to consider. Now, the, the disadvantage of shuffle is that it's different every time. There's repeated patterns. You can kind of, like, recognize the shuffle that you get, but still, you're going to have to be really reactionary. You're probably going to have to drop down your speed mod, so you're not going to be MAing it or PAing it as strongly. But shuffle is definitely something to consider if uh, if you're if it's one of the songs I mentioned. And then the last two, um, I well, I I actually just have two songs to name, and these are are what I call anything but the original chart. <laughs> uh, there's two songs that I think should be anything but the original chart. Uh, Pie Guy, do you do you have a guess? I'll I'll tell you the what. One's one's an eighteen, one's a seventeen. Um, well, I was gonna say maybe Valkyrie Dimension Challenge, but anything but the original chart. I would say Dead End Groove Radar Special, but you've already said that one. Yeah, I mean Shuffle. Uh, by the way, I by the way, I prefer Dead End Groove Radar Special on left. I will admit it's probably hard, if not impossible, to PFC. PFC it on left because there's like a couple patterns that are just like like really really out there on left that's why people do shuffle but you can definitely get a really good score on left and I much much prefer it on left but uh yeah I'll just I'll tell you the two songs so anything but the original I would say one pray challenge pray challenge that's one <laughs> and uh two it's the newest song Jacunda Memoria I would say play that on anything but the original <laughs> So uh, those those are the two songs that I say play on anything but the original. <laughs> All right, so that that kind of wraps up uh, the turn mods. So that brings us up to uh, number five, which is the step zone, and step zone is what it sounds like, and that would be uh, the the target, the arrow targets at the top. So turning it on, well they're on, and turning it off, well they're off. 
and we're gonna skip this because keep it on okay <laughs> unless like you're doing stealth and turning it off and trying to show off that's no just just forget about it, okay we're skipping that it's not gonna help you used to be called it used to be called dark in extreme I guess dark. leave it at that exactly it's no no use uh, use to us for improving score all right that makes makes uh, the next one which is scroll scroll is whether it is the arrows are traveling from bottom to top or from top to bottom if it's top to bottom that's called reverse so normal and reverse which one should you pick obviously whatever you're most comfortable with you will notice some of the players especially in japan they use reverse so are they onto some secret that you're not privy to is is, is that what they're doing no, if you're curious why a lot of players, especially in Japan, do use uh, reverse, that's because uh, a lot of them came from different games. In this case, like back in the day, like old school players started with like Beat Mania or Percussion Freaks or <laughs> Pop and Music and 2DX. All these games, they are by default what we would call reverse. They're all top, bottom played. All of them are. So a lot of players preferred playing DDR that way when when the option was given to them. As an added bonus, a lot of the boss songs from uh, DDR Max 1 through DDR Supernova 1, they forced like 1.5 reverse on all of us. So it benefited you to get good with uh, it benefited you to get good with reverse. And probably from those days, the old school players, they preferred it. I'd say most new school players, uh, they almost never use reverse. But if you were wondering, that's that's why. So, you know, just a fun fact. All right, that brings us on to the next one. Again, that just that comes down to preference. Whatever's more comfortable. You can explore if you want. But, like, personally, I also just think that normal's better because uh, the arrows are higher up, which is closer to eye level, which makes it easier to match. And like especially on gold cabs Jesus like they're already lower than white cabs and all the other cabs and then you're gonna put it on reverse and like shrink down like you're basically looking at the ground at that point <laughs> so anyways I, I think normal's better but I, if you prefer and you feel better on reverse then be on reverse all right that brings up the next topic which is arrow color arrow color wow okay uh bye guy what do you play on um, well, if I'm if I have arrows to color in, I would play on note. Right. It's just the clearest way of distinguishing what arrows are on what part of the beat. And that is a uh, we should probably tell them what the arrow colors are available. So the four arrow colors available are vivid, rainbow, note, and flat. By the way, since DDR Ace, rainbow has become default. You know if it's default or not by looking at the menu and seeing if it's green. Like you can see in the, the left side, the 3X is white, and on the right side, note is white. That's because it's not, a, if it's green, that means it's a, what the standard is. If I were to change from note to uh, rainbow, it would be green. Then that's it, is green. it looks like it is green on the left side. Uh, like it's hidden, it's, hid, it's hidden behind that text box, but it's oh, definitely okay. green. Yeah, yeah, okay. You have better eyes than me. I didn't even notice that. So, yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting to mention that because for the longest time, Vivid was considered the default, which was really annoying because, like, on DDR Extreme, you'd go into a tournament with someone and they'd, you know, we called it Cock Blocking You Rainbow. Well, Solo. It was called Solo back in the day. But, uh,. And it was weird, like, if, if one person picked solo, oh, okay. it bled into the other player. By the way, uh, fun fact, some of my favorite note skin, solo flat. If one person picked solo and you picked flat, you'd get the rainbow quarter notes for all the flat notes instead of the vivid flat notes. Oh, I loved it. Oh. Anyways, uh, don't, don't, don't get started with that. Uh, Alright, well, where were we at? Uh, okay, uh, so no, there's a options. default. So, Rainbow is considered like the default, but you'll notice most players oh, yeah. use Note. I was a Rainbow or solo player for the longest time. I was pretty late to get over to the Note train, mostly because uh, DDR Supernova left a bad taste in my mouth. 
Uh, Note was only starting to be available during DDR Supernova in the arcade mode, and the backgrounds were just it's, so it's bl awful. It's they blended were, in with the backgrounds. The backgrounds were hard to see. Terrible. They were terrible, awful, and I felt that Note was like almost impossible to read. Uh, some of the some of the notes, like like not even joking. And Supernova 2 was the worst. If I got the red background, like, that's it. Like, I wouldn't even play the song. Like, <laughs> the white on red background, I could not see the arrows. It was it was awful. And then DDR-X rolled around. I still stay stuck to Rainbow for quite a while. But I'd say around, like, maybe X2 or X3, I finally realized with, with the screen filter, Darkest, uh, finally, Note seemed like a pretty good option. Note reveals a little bit more information than Rainbow does. It differentiates uh, between like 12th notes, 24th notes. Well, not really. They're they're just all okay. greens. They're all greens. Yeah, right? it's yeah. Basically, Rainbow is orange for quarter note, blue for eighth note, and purple for anything else. Yeah. Note is uh, red for quarter note blue for 8th note, yellow for 16th note, and then green for anything else. So it distinguishes between, it distinguishes 16th is basically the difference between note and rainbow. Yeah, I would say that, uh, like, like note has a bit of a, it's, it's, the color's not as bold, but it's, like, pretty distinguished. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to... It, it's, easy, it's easy to tell apart. Yeah. I unless would, you're colorblind. I would say that a note is, like, the easiest to distinguish the notes so that's why most players use note but rainbow is definitely uh usable and some people do use flat from time to time and very few people do use uh, uh vivid but uh you know do whatever is most comfortable for you i did want to bring up I, and by the way this is becoming a much longer episode than i thought and i didn't mention it but pie guy may or may not have to dip at some point which uh if he does then uh well i i, I do have lp crossover on standby he'll be joining us shortly but uh, yeah, Pi Guy, just let me know if you have to dip. Uh, but going on to the different note skins. Uh, what was I gonna say? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Pi Guy, save me. We were talking about no rainbow. Oh yes, I got it. I wrote it down. Thank God. Uh, so here's a fun fact. Uh, some players in Japan and Korea, they actually think that it alters the timing if you change the note skin. And uh, most notably would be uh, a famous player in Korea going by the name Jupiter. Uh, Jupiter is actually the current world record holder for most MFCs. He's got over 5,000. I think he's approaching 6,000. You know, that's that's among all difficulties, singles and doubles. It's it's insane. And I was very struck. I've played with him a few times. And every time I played with him, he's constantly changing between note, flat, rainbow, and vivid and i'm like Whoa, what like I, I i didn't understand why he would be changing between it you know that kind of breaks my consistency rule but he swears by it and keep in mind this is coming from like the world record mfc holder that there's a difference it might all be like you know placebo it might be all placebo probably is but he does feel that uh like between note and rainbow there's like a t uh, like an earlier or later feel. I actually kind of interviewed him today. Um, I asked him I asked him about this because I I wanted to put this in the episode, and uh, let me just like go by what he told me. So when I asked him like why does he he prefer it, he said that he usually plays rainbow and flat for beginner, basic, difficult, and expert. And challenge, he prefers to use note and rainbow. When I asked him why, he said that rainbow has a soft feeling and note has a hard feeling. Um, it's a little hard to interpret, but it says it's a personal difference. But uh, rainbow is more comfortable with the music, or with is more comfortable with music with changes in the BPM. And for the more difficult song, he he does prefer note. So like you know, going with like fourteens or higher. And, uh, uh, yeah, just lower difficulties, he prefers rainbow or flat. Harder difficulties, he prefers note. And uh, it just said that it's the soft and hard feeling that he gets from it. And uh, he also said that uh, the flat feel the same. It has a constant beat, so he uses rainbow to feel soft. And, ah, but again, like, this is a language barrier thing, but uh, I'm very happy that he was able to share 
uh, his his thoughts about it. It's it's nice to pick the brains of uh, people who have like special unique options. That's why I also showed you uh, you know you dies boost to give you an idea maybe to try it out. All right, so moving on, we're going to go on to well, moving on is going to be really simple because the next ones are are talking about cut. Uh, hold on, let me. I'm uh, need to see. So we're talking about cut, freeze arrow, and jumps, and we can ignore all of that because that is not going to help your score. <laughs> uh, but really briefly, cut has two options. There's either cut one or cut two. Cut one will make there be only quarter notes, so red, red, and red or orange notes if you're using rainbow or notes. And cut two is quite interesting because it'll make only red and blue notes. So if you want to use them, then uh. There, there's there's some advantages to it there might be like some 18s that have like a really hard like let's say like blew my mind maybe you just can't do the beginning of blew my mind but you want to try to pass or like you know the ending slow down like ending ish like three quarters of the way slow down you can put it on cut two you'll get most of the, of the steps and then you won't struggle so much at the slow sections so it, it's it, it's a tool you can use but I wouldn't re rely on it too much but it's there freeze it's just gonna hurt you it could be a tool you use so you can like kind of see a pattern more clearly maybe you didn't know how the steps were because uh, too much freeze arrows take it off you'll actually see the step pattern like you could use it and jumps I mean if you want to get good Perfect example. Perfect example there, Splash Gold Expert, the ending. Oh yeah, Splash Gold. If you want to get good at uh, Flash, Splash Gold, uh, turn off the freeze arrows and uh, you'll actually be able to see the real pattern. So uh, that that's that's a good tip. Thank you, Pie Guy. And uh, yeah, jumps, I mean, uh, I don't know, just you gotta, you gotta get good. You gotta play jumps. <laughs> so that's it. And then uh, finally... And and to note, using any of those, um, like if you're going for lamps and you use any of those options that make the that actually do make the chart easier and remove steps, like it doesn't look the same as passing freeo. You get like a, is it a purple lamp? Oh, There's some... I, I should have told you that this is like literally what we're covering next. I got a graphic up and everything to show the lamps. <laughs> So yeah, it'll like it'll be obvious that you quote cheated, and it'll and it won't look the same as doing it legitimately. Yeah. So, uh, but back to like the um, the last option, which is the gauge. We did cover it. Uh, the gauge is very useful if you're grinding. It it does one thing and it does another thing. It saves time. It kills money. Okay. If if money's not an option and you're trying to make the most of your session, using the gauge life. Uh, you know, risky or life four, you're able to grind a song as long as you can like play it every time with with less than three mi or with less than four misses. Then you're able to quit out if you're not getting the score you want, and then retry it. Uh, it's it's something that you can use. It is at your disposal, and it's something I use very often. If you ever watch me play and I'm grinding, I'm using it all the goddamn time. So there you go. So these are all the software options that you have. Here, I'll, I'll say one more. Th I'll say one more thing about that, and then I do need to dip. Sure. Um, I'll just kind of throw this in as a bonus, but because the other thing that the gauge does, which actually helped me, a stealth player, is it actually ch on my machine it changes the color of the lights that flash. Like, on, if I look on the top of the screen, I see lights flashing to the beat. If I use like normal or life four, they'll be like rainbowy, flashing every eighth note or whatever and it's not kind of hard to see a pattern but in life four it's just always flashing red and so that that helped me when i was going for ma on stealth and i just look at i turn it on risky and i look at the the red flashing lights it was easier to time all right thank you all right well pie guys seriously thank you so much for helping me uh get through the opening section we're going to be inviting on lp crossover very shortly and uh yeah uh we'll We'll see you again maybe in a future episode. Yeah, see you around. All right. Take care. All right, and how about we just use this segue to welcome on our next guest. LP Crossover, are you still here? Yes, I am. All right, perfect. Uh, LP Crossover has been on standby waiting graciously, and I think this is a great time to welcome him on. 
Uh, LP crossover. Uh, let's start by like getting a little bigger. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. All right, there he is, that handsome fellow. All right. Uh, how about you introduce yourself? Let everyone know uh, a little bit about you, how long you've been playing, and what you can kind of do in the game. Yes. Uh, this is LP Crosser. How are you guys doing? Uh, I've been um, <clears throat> I've been playing through other games, but mostly I've been playing through DDR. Uh, in I would say 2019 is where I really um, is where I really tried to uh, get a lot more practice in. But um, yeah, um, I have been playing DDR. Um, well, actually, for how long I've been playing DDR? Do you want the short version or the long version? Can I take the middle version? <laughs> well, uh, let's try to let's try to sum it up as short as uh, short as possible without going over. So, um, start playing start playing uh, DDR on Max Two for the PlayStation Two. Kept going, and then Supernova came, started to lose interest. X, I completely lost interest for over a decade. Then I got uh, the place. Then I got a PlayStation Two again, and tried to buy all the DDR games. Found up, found a cabin out in 2018, and started to play uh, through all that there. English translation. I've been playing uh, solidly for three years. All right, very nice. And uh, we're we're just now talking about lamps. And I guess this would be a good time to ask, uh, what kind of lamps do you have? What, what are some of the um, lamps that you're aiming for, you've gotten, you've achieved? What are you looking to lamp? Which levels? Well, so far, I ha um, the, highest, uh, the highest levels for a uh, PFC is a 12. And uh, highest, highest fold combo is a 15. Okay, so Actually, no, 16. 16. Which 16? I recently fold combo. Uh, Max Unlimited Expert. Max Unlimited Expert? That's that's a really hard 16 to full combo. It is a hard 16 to full combo, but I've been playing that song many times on the PlayStation 2. Alright, sounds good. So, as you can see, up on the screen, I do have mm -hmm. uh, the lamp. So, one thing I think a lot of people don't understand is how the lamps work. There's some odd colors that maybe someone has never seen. So, let's start with the first one, which is kind of the most common and that would be a dark gray this one stands for just simply you've never played the song so if the song sh displays a dark gray it means that the song has never been played all right the next one would be dark amber and it's kind of like a brownish color and all that means is that you played the song but you did not pass it you failed it uh, moving on and this is what pie guy was alluding to was the assist clear you don't see this too often, but if you see anyone with a purple lamp, it means that they used uh, either cut one, two, jumps off, or threes off. If you pass it, you will get a purple lamp. Bright amber, or maybe orange, if you will, uh, would just mean that it's the normal clear. You passed the song. Congratulations. Now red, and this one there's a lot of confusion over, and I want to explain that. This means that... Uh, the player passed the song on either extra stage or life four with life gauge requirements. And this is why it's confusing. Wikipedia is wrong. It is not extra stage. It will not work. If you play a song on extra stage, it will not count towards it. It has to be on life four during the regular. <laughs> or wait, am I mistaken? Wait, hold on. LP, save me. Am I, am I wrong about this? Or is someone in the chat? Oh. Well, I didn't hear you quite clear because Fish just sneezed on me. <laughs> is uh, that your dog? That was my dog. Oh, wow. Maybe he'll, <laughs> he'll make a guest appearance. Uh, I hope. Or maybe I'm thinking about something else. I'm thinking about the fact that if you do pass a song... Yeah, okay, I know what I was thinking. I, I confused something. Very okay. funny. If you pass a song with less than four misses you will not get it unless you put on life four or you did it on extra stage that's what i that's why it's confusing so even if you pass a song and you have less than four misses you will not get the red lamp unless you were playing it with life four or you were playing it on extra stage Ugh, brain fart but yeah there you go <laughs> blue's very simple uh that's the uh, full combo with at least goods or higher. Uh, green is full combo with greats or higher. Yellow is 
powerful combo with perfects or higher, so perfects are marvelous, and then the ever so elusive white or rainbow, which is a marvelous will combo with all marvelous on the song. So yeah, those are the different lamps that you can get in uh, JDR. Um, and if you want the folders to be a lamp color, you have to play every song in the folder. So if you have a PFC on every song in the Y folder, then when you're sorting by the folder, you will see a flashing gold lamp for your Y folder. You have to play every song in that folder to get folder lamps. So those are the different lamps. All right. So uh, maybe for the people who are joining us late, I thought it'd be interesting to kind of recover what we talked about and see your take on it. So if you recall, the first thing we talked about today was hardware. And I wanted to ask you, do you ever check leveling or do you bring towels, paper towels or what, what, what's your uh, setup when you go to the arcade? So my setup is try to be the most basic, try to be the most basic possible. The only thing that I ever try to bring with me are water bottles and um, sometimes devices I ever get bored if somebody wants to um, come and take over the machine. But uh, I do, um, most of the time, I do bring my, uh, one of my friends around, and he has the tools, he has towels, and he also has the, uh, <clears throat> and he also has the spray, and he also has the sprayers and baby powder, of course. And uh, have you experimented with baby powder, water on the panels, or Windex or cleaning solutions? All right, so to get this out of the way, I hate baby powder. I want grip. When it comes down to uh, playing, when it comes down to playing hard songs, but um, he does bring well, not particularly Windex, but um, it's a combination of water and rubbing alcohol in a sprayer. Interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's how uh, that's what I use uh, when we try to um, when we try to get more grip on the pads. Um, he does bring he does bring towels, and recently my hands have gotten more sweatier and. Uh, what I came to realize is, put the towel, uh, put the towel on the bar. Yep. So that would just keep more grip on it. And if the sweat stripping down your arms to your hands, it's likely to be absorbed in the towel if you have a towel on the bar. Where if you if it's going down on the le leather leather uh, hand grips, it's more likely to drip down onto the pad. So yeah, that's why I also prefer a towel. That's what I was most experiencing, but um, every, but um, yeah, I rarely do that. But if if it if puts comes to shove, I do have to use it, and I'm so glad that my friend has one. All right, and uh, back to the hardware. Um, this is the last question. I already know your answer, but please tell the uh the people watching. Uh, what style cabinet do you prefer playing on? I mostly like playing on the gold cab because of the big because of the big screen. Uh, much, um, I don't know when it comes to, uh, the, the audio quality, but, um, the, um, the white cabs that, um, play right next to me have much fierce, tr has much fiercer treble. I like to play with more, I like to play with more bass. Okay. Well, it um, could be a setting thing, but you definitely are preferring the bigger screen, though. Mm -hmm. I am preferring the bigger screen, and plus the pads are more plush, and they light up. Yeah, and that's, that's kind of nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's Probably yeah. I miss most is uh, lighting up panels, but uh, what can you do? Yeah, that's true, and uh, I do. I just and uh, I do like the shininess. All right, and uh, let's go on to the software. What What do you think is your current read speed? Where do you? What's your scroll speed that you're most comfortable at? Um. So, f um, I don't know if it if I really have to say this, but it's pretty much anything i can read at any scroll speed that is um less than i can read as i can read as high as um 600 but that's really if i'm pushing it because reality there's um probably one song that has consistent 600 bpm that's max period and i always love playing that song but i can read as low as 35. now with all due respect uh you're telling me how low you can read but what are you playing at the best at there must be a speed that you feel most comfortable at, and you notice that you're getting more. But you're PFCing level twelves. What what twelves? What what twelves have you PFC'd? Name one. 
Um, New Gravity and uh, the most recent one that I cleared was on Difficult. I think it's called High and Low was uh, over 200 extra yeah, uh, extra saver song. 210 and you PFC <clears throat> I PFC, yeah, I PFC New Gravity, I PFC. I also uh, PFC Tsumi and I forget okay, what was the what, other what one. Speed, give me some speed numbers. So Tsumi <gasps> 180 BPM, what speed did you play it on? 2X. So 360, what did you play mm -hmm. high and low on? 2X. So 420. Mm -hmm. What did you play New Gravity on? You already know the answer. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yes. Well, um, I'm going to diagnose <laughs> diagnose your <head. laughs> I'm going to need to ask you to uh, start paying a little bit more attention about your scroll speed. You need mm -hmm. to, to have more consistency. If you're, uh, Don't tell me that 2x is consistent. No, that's it's not. It's not. No way. No way. Absolutely not. I mean, <laughs> but uh, when it came down to uh, other, like, uh, dance simulation games like uh, um, like ITG, there is a consistent scroll speed that I do like to use from when it comes down to the ad mods, that's 400. Okay. Well, two things. One, I want to see you bump up that speed. That's number one. Mm -hmm. You're going to see better uh, timing in your Marvelous Attack. And two, you got to you gotta do the math. You got to like realize what you're comfortable at. So like try to get up to 450, try to get it up to 500, and yes, even try to get it higher than that. And like, let's say you're comfortable at 550. Don't stop picking 2x for everything. Pick the best mod that's going to get you closest to that BPM scroll speed. Okay, that. <laughs> Absolutely, I have been use I have been using a higher scroll speed than 2x. I have um a higher scroll speed than 2x. I have um another um an 18 that I've managed to clear was a uh, Nakaki no Ki. That was a uh, on I believe yeah 3x. Mm -hmm. 160 at 3x, right? So it's like 480? Just be, it was just because that the that the uh, that the steps near the end is completely cluttered. I just need to read it a bit more. Yeah. So uh, try to try to expand it. Things will be a little more, more clear, and you'll notice your timing will improve. All right. So what about uh, mm -hmm. moving on, like boost or appearance? Have you messed around with hidden plus, sudden plus, or any of the boost options? I have messed with boost a couple of times, especially on Delta Max okay. and Max Period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those would be songs to. They definitely were. They definitely were helpful, but uh, I cannot read uh, 600 with boost. Yeah, it just gets a little bit higher. It does, especially, I even tried playing on 0.75x. Well, yeah, uh, just maybe explore a little bit more, or just that might be one of the songs you can't do it. You know, we saw you die earlier playing 0.75 boost with max period, so <laughs> you know, it could be helpful. Uh, what about turns? Are you against using turn mods? Have you explored turns? Um, I've only explored turns just to uh, get my uh, just to get my left foot um, even stronger because uh, my brother has recently purchased a manual car, so I just want to use that. Uh, I just want to use that to my advantage. Okay. But um, in courses of other times, I've been using turn mods. Uh, I've only used turn mods uh, three times for Sunkiss Drop, which is a post BES across uh, across the right heavy chart, and a very unorthodox time when I use left arm trick machine evolution expert. Okay, yeah, <laughs> that's that's not a bad choice to do. It, it's pretty hard, mm -hmm. in like the awkward patterns, but it really is there for the ending. The ending is what <laughs> is the reason why you want to do that. All right, uh, maybe and I last... believe the and I believe the final time that I uh, used the term mod was an Arbiata expert, and I managed to uh, get and I managed to get a nine hundred, actually no, eighty nine, uh, eighty eight ninety thousand. Is that what you call it? I did. 000? Yeah, eight hundred ninety k with no bar. Mm -hmm. All right, and I guess the last like really one that matters would be the. What's your arrow color preference? Color preference would uh, would definitely would definitely be vivid when it comes down to elevens all the way up to sixteens, and then that's and that's when I change it up for seventeens uh, or higher, or if it's like faster, or if it's like faster BPM, that's when I choose note. Okay, I mean you're kind of like a Jupiter then. Uh, you know, I, I I would advise against it. You know, I would say like get more consistent. Uh, but uh, you know, if if it's working for you, fine. But uh, I do encourage you to get one and I'll uh, stick to it. It goes back to my analogy where like you could play on three different cabs, three different days, 
but I think you'd improve the most if you played on one cab three days because you'll have more experience with it and you're going to get more comfortable with it and get more consistent with it. So I do believe uh, sticking to one of them and not changing around all the time. I gave the anecdote of Jupiter switching around, but I don't think that's like the standard, but you know, take that for what it's worth. All right, so that kind of wraps up the software side. Um, now we're going to talk about something together, and those are the secret modifiers. Ooh, are there secret modifiers in the game? Uh, yeah, kind of. And to get these, you actually have to be, uh, you have to register your card with a Konami account, and then you have to link your Konami account to eGate573 for the DDRA20 Plus website. Now, I'm not going to go through all those steps. There are plenty of better guides than I could ever tell you that you can find. But generally, uh, once you're done, you should be able to log in with your account. There's my account, uh, Dr. Groove. Uh, uh, yeah. And you'll be able to access some special settings. So what are the special settings? Well, the settings would be under settings. And it's all in Japanese. You could use a translator, but most of it is obvious. So the first one is as uh, the name. If you ever want to like mess around changing your name sometimes, which whoa, do I really have spaces after my name? Huh. I wonder if that affected anything. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. I had like four spaces after my name. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> huh. Ah, whatever. Uh, next up is, you know. is the uh, region. So, you know, I'm, I'm living and playing in Taiwan, so I selected Taiwan, but you, know, you can change your region here. You can lie. They're not, like, VPNing and, like, checking or anything. So you can put whatever you want, to be honest. Uh, next up is uh, your uh, 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 diet information. And uh, the second option is just on or off, and the first option is just your weight. And, yes, I just got uh, docs with how much I weigh which is probably, I wish I weighed that. I think I'm a little bit over there now. <laughs> uh, next up is your uh, character. <coughs> so, in fact, there's quite a few. Uh, I believe that some of the earlier options are like, ra this is a random man, this is a random woman, and this is just random character. Or you can just choose the character you like. I always pick Babylon. People think it's because I think he's the cutest. Yeah, maybe I do, but honestly, I pick Babylon because he's the smallest. You know, he's like really tiny, so he's less distracting on the screen. So that's that's why I prefer Babylon. Um, yeah, so people would actually prefer Babylon as well. Yeah, so these are all options you can change, and here's some even more options you can change. So next up is the arrow type. Now this is different um, from like the arrow color. This is also called the note skin. And believe it or not, I do not use the default. That's right. So the options that you get if you go to the website are these. Um, the first one is the normal. This is just the standard DDR A20. It's like since DDR, in fact, like DDR Supernova, they've been using the normal. And then uh, DDR X, they kind of experimented with the X style arrow, which is horrible and atrocious, and it's an abomination. But uh, then there's also classic with cyber, and then they go to medium, small, and dot because yeah, okay. We can pretty much ignore the yeah, uh, note size. Unlike ITG, where like shrinking the notes using mini is beneficial, the spacing doesn't change if you put it on medium, small, or dot. So there's not really an advantage. So that brings us like four options: normal, X, classic, and cyber. And I already told you X is horrible. So what about the other ones? Well, normal's just fine. Pretty much every player uses normal. Almost every player. And I think that's why. I use classic. <laughs> Call me a contrarian, but like, <laughs> but I, I just, I decided one day, it's like, you know what? I'm gonna change it to, to classic. You know why not? And I, I changed it to classic. I did just as good, maybe better, but I think it was only because I was improving still, so it was better. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I just, I like. It. And I kind of like this little, you know, hook right there. It's such a minuscule change. Like, it, it's a few less pixels than here. So, like, <laughs> I don't know, but I prefer classic. I don't know why. It's, like, such a minuscule change. But if you want to know what Dr. D uses, Dr. D uses classic. You're welcome to try it out. See if you, you enjoy it or not. But I do use classic. 
With that said, what about Cyber? Believe it or not, quite a few players do use Cyber. Like, uh, for example, Koji in Japan he uses Cyber. Quite a few other players. If I bring up that video again, you might f see a couple of players using Cyber. Why do they prefer it? Honestly, I don't know. It's like, it's like a, I, I don't know. I don't see the appeal of it. I mean, I, I can see why no one wants to use X. I mean, that's horrible. That's like trash. Just like they should just like throw it in the trash already. But uh, Cyber, yeah, like, mm. Now the annoying thing about all these options, you have to change it on the website. So like if you like normal, classic, and cyber, every time you'll have to change it between rounds if you want to update it. That's unfortunate, but that's what you have to do. Because it's not inside the game mode. I don't know why they did that. You used to be able to change this in the game mode, like in DDR X2, X3. But then they just stopped allowing you to change it and they locked it behind. Uh, this, but luckily it's not locked behind a paywall, <gasps> which brings Kick. us to well, not yet, but we're gonna get there in a second. All right, so that is the note skins that you have to your advantage. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, try it out. Uh, it can't hurt to try. All right, next up is a really important option. <laughs> like it's so important, and I don't even use it. <laughs> so the next option is borders. You can either have, uh, or measures, you can have like uh, note measures. By default, these are on. Uh, I believe that if you if you don't do anything, you automatically have this one, which would be the quarter notes falling in between a measured line. You could change it to following, to following on the line or the beat or whatever you want to call it. And some people prefer that. I think Brazani still- Actually the, um, actually the default is, I believe it's the borders actually no it's the center it's the center oh, it's the center, it's the, center. Right, the, uh, the center is for mm -hmm. yeah so this is something you can do some other music games have something like this but believe those it, were the, that was the default but believe it or not believe it or not most people just want it off they think it's just too distracting it, like I could I could see the argument that the line kind of helps you to line up to the you know to the center but like in actuality like we're really just looking at the notes. Like it's kind of fun. Like I, I think it's interesting to watch people play with it. But I will say this: I've never found any advantage to using it. Some players in the advanced player, you know, realm, they do use it, but it comes down to preference. You know, again, this topic of today's episode is preference. So I I suggest explore it. You know, know if you really like it or not, and then you can make your decision. All right, and then the last free option, yes, I said free option, and you'll see why, is this. And this is a very brief, and we're going to make this really brief. Put it on darkest, okay? Done? Okay, we're done. Don't turn it off. Don't put it on dark. Don't put it on dark. But what's the, even the point of dark and darker? Like, I, I'm I don't that, know either. Maybe it's because that they want something that moves in um, in the background just to keep the feel of it. But um, for me, I'm for I pitch black. I'm waiting for pitch black. I'll I'll pay just money. Just I'll pay money for them to just have a black screen. Okay, I'll I'll pay money for that feature. But uh, yeah, put it on darkest. Like, it it makes the the notes stand out a lot more. Like, you know, if you, the the contrast is bad, the darker you can make the background, the more the better contrast the notes are gonna appear. So. Darkest is absolutely the way to go. There's really no denying it. Find me one pro player that's not playing on Darkest, okay? Yeah, I'll wait. Me. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, well, not really a top player, but I never use uh, the filters. All right, then. I, I did say pro. <laughs> but yeah, I do. Yes, it is It is true. Use the Darkest, use the darkest option. All right. So uh, that brings us on to the final two options, which are paid options that's right these are paid options now there's some good and bad to this so again i'm not going through a tutorial here i'm not going to teach you how to link your credit card how to buy pasali how to like no this isn't that video there's plenty of guides okay people will teach you there's guides out there that will teach you how to link your card to this website there are guides that will teach you how to link your credit card to buy Pasali, make it auto renew, all that good stuff. I'm not covering that. Let's say that you do cover it. What does it give you? So the first option, which I do use, would be putting the notes in front of the text. You see the down arrow? I can barely see it, but there's a down arrow here. 
You almost can't tell because there's a big ass number 16 blocking it. <laughs> why why they make you pay for this is like asinine, but they make you pay for it. And what you have to pay to get is to make sure that the arrows are in front. <coughs> Which by the way, is that a bug or something? I actually can't see. Look at that. I can't see either. Yeah, look at that. It's got to be a bug. Because like, I should definitely see like the outside of this, and I don't. Oh, oh well, okay, now I can see it clear. Oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah. I'm the right. one is still in front. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not crazy. What? I'm not crazy, right? Oh, you're not. What? What, what am I paying for? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to go. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to guess that this is like their like marketing. Like. I don't know why they couldn't just take it's it. It's it is so. it is probably a bug. Right, let's, but let's, yeah, that's how that's how it works. I didn't even notice it till now. I swear. But uh, in theory, all the notes should be in front of all the numbers and letters. Okay, so yeah, obviously it gives you more of a clear view. You know, you're not gonna have any problem of a note being hidden behind it. But like truly, like things are moving really fast. It doesn't make a huge difference, but it's something to consider. And then the last option, and it is kind of important and that is the fast and slow so when you're getting uh, if you if you get a perfect if you don't have this option turned on you don't know if you're fast or slow if you turn it on it'll tell you if your perfect was fast or slow you're great or you're good it helps you keep on track and I highly highly recommend doing it so I said that there's good and bad news so the bad news you got to pay for it the good news listen carefully the good news you only have to pay once you only have to pay once because here's how it works. If you paid one time, like one month, and you turn them on, and then you didn't pay the next month, and then you're no longer a premium user, it doesn't matter. It will save your last option that you selected. So if you pay for the first month, you've turned it on, and then the next month you don't pay, it will still be on. You'll have to pay it to turn it off, which I don't think you're ever going to pay to turn it off, but you just have to pay it once. So that's something to consider. You don't have to have it automatically renewed every month in order to get these features. Just do it once and you're done. All right. I know what option I'm going to be doing. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there you go. Uh, that is something. Yeah, fast and slow are paid modifiers. But, by the way, the payment is like 300 Pasali, 315 or something, which is like 3 or $4. You know, it's only 3 or $4. Just, uh, you know, do it once and you're done and... It'll, it'll last you like I did it once well, well I, I paid but that's the next topic we're going to get into and it's going to be the last thing this episode is running on way too long <laughs> but <coughs> but uh, uh, I, I I continually pay but I know people who they like they did it in like 2016 and they got like five years out of this with only paying once so definitely consider that all right and that pretty much covers all the options holy shit yeah, wow. that was a lot. <laughs> mm hmm All right, I'm not even gonna bother bother recapping because I think I'll my my voice is just about shot. But all right, we we covered a lot here today. So we talked about all the hardware options, all the software options. We talked about all the tips and tricks, what I use, what other people use, things to keep in mind. And this is all we're not even talking about gameplay. You know, these are all things that you can know about, know what's at your disposal. And then be able to to maximize the effect. All right. Uh, one last thing, and I'm gonna keep it really brief because again, we're really running over here. If you end up paying for these options, one thing that's kind of nice is uh, if you have a paid Pasali subscription, you can then export your song data. So of course, your play data is on on this website. But like, you know, let's be honest here. I don't want to see, I can't read Japanese, but I don't want to see my most played songs because that would embarrass me. It's, yeah, here. So here's your play data. So like you can see it all here, but like, let's be honest, like there's like 20 pages to click through and it's not exactly like, you know, looking that great. It's not very interactive. And you know, even if you like click on something, it's just like, oh yeah, there you go. That's your score. Like it's whatever. But if you do have a paid subscription, you can export it to things. The most popular one in Japan is called Skill Attack. <coughs> Skill Attack is used by most players in the in Japan, obviously, Korea as well, and a lot of the top players in the, in America use it. 
and skill attack is a way that you can ex export your scores here and people care about the skill points like if you're a top tier player or like you're trying to like you know prove that you're better than someone then you want to be the highest skill point so yeah no surprise uh, Chris is here at number one and uh, you know you got all the big names like you know Femmes and Brazani so if you want to be at top of the skill attack you got to export your scores to this website <coughs> again I'm not going to teach you guys how to do it you know it's up to you to like find out those guys but this is one site you can use and uh, it, it's depending on like how how you score on the harder songs and that'll increase your skill ranking a more modern one that I really like for score tracking and it's making a bigger name for itself recently is uh, sand by ice cream so sand by ice cream is a much more modern feeling one and uh, you can upload the scores so what is it it's dance dance revolution at the arcade scores and you can upload your scores when you use this app and you can view it and yeah that's that's one of the best things and you can click on any song so here we go we have like the 18s and you can see who's the world record at the time and uh, what's also really cool about this is <coughs> you can like click on a song and after you click on it there's a few things one it tells you the BPM that the song is it tells you the main BPM it's played at and it gives you an idea for like a speed mod you'd be you know 1x would be that speed 1.25 and uh, most importantly I feel is it, it tells you the slowdown like it this is the BPM graph so it starts at 212 for that long then it's gonna be 424 for this long ah. then it'll slow down to 212 again and then it'll slow down to 106 then back up so it's a really cool feature it does the same thing with like stops like if a song has a stop it'll it'll uh, put in it'll show you that as well and uh, even more cool, uh, if you go to uh, like this, like if you want to say like, well, what is the challenge chart? Well, you can click on the YouTube link, and he usually links uh, the site usually links uh, like a Usin video of of it being played. So you can like just like take a look at the chart. So it's it's like a one stop shop for everything. You can learn a lot about a song just by uh, this website. Uh, you can even see the entire step chart. <laughs> So like you can have I think that's what they've been using for uh, Xenia's Eye Vanisher, which is a place for sim files. Uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can like modify it. You can put on the normal turn, mirror, left, right, and you can display it and you can use this to memorize the chart. So there there's, there's a lot of cool features that that uh Sandby has. So I highly recommend making an account for for Sandby and and giving it a shot. It'll really enrich it'll enrich like uh, your experience I feel so something to keep in mind um, if you are going to go ahead and pay for the the subscription and then you can export it and if, if you stop paying for it nothing actually happens like you're when you did upload it it'll still be all there so you'll just have to pay again if you want to keep uploading it all right so that is like as a DDR player those, those are all the tools you have at your disposal oh by the way life 4 I forgot to mention life 4 life 4 also offers a very unique uh, a system where you can get ranked and be placed into a tier level based on like the scores that you have on like 14s 15s all that good stuff and you can uh, chat goals. with other people yeah you can make goals, has goals it, has, um, it also has uh it also has some dedicated trials as well, so you can. It has their own like courses of some sorts, where it ranges from twelves all the way up to nine. Um, I think eighteen, yeah, eighteen. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's a lot of things you can do. Life Forward does have a Discord. Feel free to check them out. They also have a site. I, I should have probably got their site up, prepared. That was my bad. But uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, now as a DDR player, you pretty much know all the tools you have at your disposal. There's a lot to consider. There's the hardware aspect, there's the software, and there's like the meta, like outside of the entire game when you're not even at the arcade. But uh, knowing everything that you have available is definitely going to help you improve. And uh, I don't know, what do you think, LP Crossover? Did you get anything out of this episode? Um, actually, yeah, quite a bit. Especially, especially when it comes down to uh, different types of hardware. Which, guys, by the way, if you're trying to go for like the best possible options, do not use the gold cap for players in the United States. Okay. Well, you heard yeah, that. because the deal, because the deal is, 
you will never get premium play on gold caps ever. That's true. Yeah, you will never get that. That's something I did. I did skip over, but that can mm -hmm. influence which cab people play on because yeah, premium currently is not available on gold caps, so you're paying more for less. And yeah, it's which is actually yeah. All right, well, LP, seriously, thank you so much for joining me today. And uh, pleasure is mine. All right, we'll we will talk soon, and uh, you take care. Thank you. All right, see ya. Bye. All right, uh, let's try to bring this home. So uh, that's that's gonna wrap it up, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed episode three of uh, DDR Doctor D's DDR checkup. Opinions, preferences, tips, and tricks with Dr. D and special guest LP Crossover. I think we covered a lot of great stuff today. I think that this is something that's going to be useful for players of all skill levels, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. I hope you were able to take away something. I hope that the tips that I gave you shed some light on how you approach the game, and I hope you get some improvement out of this. I was going to include some uh, uh, analysis analyzations i only had one on the deck on deck to do but like i'm going to be honest with you my voice <laughs> i'm dead guys and also there's only one I, I really prefer to have like two or three to do so i'm going to ask more people to give me submissions and i'll include the one that i have plus the other submissions that i get next time so we're going to leave it here i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you learned something and i'll see you next time peace